Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are so happy that you're joining us today. Thank you so much for being part of our Reading with Your Kids family, our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. We have a wonderful guest for you today. He is an amazing illustrator and he's here to talk to us about his latest book. One is a piñata, a book of numbers. His name is John Pada. We are really excited that so many authors are choosing to become sponsors of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Dr. Connie Tate. You've heard Dr. Connie Tate on the show. She is the author of three wonderful children's books that your kids will absolutely adore. Scooter Boy, Roll On, and Sylvester's Catastrophic Tale. You know, Dr. Tate wrote that it's summertime and it's time to read. Curl up with a book. There's no better deed. Reading is magical. Just open a book. You can travel the world from your own cozy nook. Curling up in a nook with a book with our kids. It's such a wonderful part of family life. And you are going to love curling up in a nook with one of the beautiful books from Dr. Connie Tate. You're going to meet some really really, really fascinating characters. Uh, Cal in Scooter Boy is a great character that you're just going to love and your kids are going to be able to relate to. Ren and Roland, I was fascinated to find out that Ren is based and inspired by Dr. Connie Tate's granddaughter. And you're going to love that spaghetti squash that just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And of course, you're all going to root for Sylvester's safe return in Sylvester's catastrophic tale. All of these great books are available on Amazon or, or by going to the Lucky Ginny Publishing website. And don't forget to check out Dr. Tate's website, RollOnReading.com. You go there and you can download all sorts of really fun activities for free. Dr. Connie Tate, check out her website, RollOnReading.com. This episode is also brought to you by Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Klackowitz. You're going to hear Allison on a, a future episode of the show, just in, in the next coming weeks. And she is wonderful. She's amazing. She told us all about the inspiration for this great picture book. And, and, and it's really, really fun. You know, every kid knows that mommies are the greatest. They, they feed us. They take care of us. They love us with all of their hearts. But, but did you know that they're also, like, so very cool? Or as we say in Boston, they're, like, wicked cool. And one little boy, he knows that his mommy is wicked cool. His mommy drives a big red monster truck, and it is awesome. It bounces and smashes and, and takes him on amazing adventures all over the country. And, and her truck, they can do anything and go anywhere. And best of all, they do it together. And best of all, you and your kids are going to love reading Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck together. You're going to thank Allison Paul Klackowitz for, for creating such a wonderful book. Check it out. It is available on Amazon. Join us on the line right now from a beautiful part of the world, Queens in New York City, where my beautiful wife was born. Uh, our guest is an illustrator and author. His latest book is called One is a Piñata, a Book of Numbers. Please welcome to the show, John Bada. John, how are you? Oh, very good. Happy to be here today. Really excited to, to have you on and to speak to you about your books and about illustrations and a whole lot of other stuff. We just had like a great conversation uh, before the interview started. I think some of the best conversations I have are when the, when the machine's not recording things, but we're going we're gonna to have a great conversation for you. Uh, why don't we start by telling us what One is a Piñata is all about? Well, One is a Piñata um, is a uh, learning numbers book, mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of told through a Latino, um, you know, imagery, uh, multicultural family, and, um, but just, it's in a series of uh, actually books. The, the book was written by Roseanne Greenfield Thong, which I had done two other books in the series. One was called Green is a Chili Pepper, and Round is a Tortilla, so one had to do with shapes. Uh, one had to do with colors, and then this one has to do with learning numbers. 
Excellent. Now, is will kids, in addition to learning numbers, will they be introduced to any um, Spanish numbers? In, in- yeah, so the, the numbers are all introduced uh, bilingually. So you'll learn the English uh, version of the number and the Spanish at the same time. And it's really nice, nicely printed, very big, bold, so it's easy to see, easy to remember. And, of course, the visuals uh, go along with the numbers as well. That's wonderful. I... I love it. I've mentioned many times that our family is a bicultural family. My wife is originally from Puerto Rico. My, my, my family is originally from like all over Northern Europe, wherever very white blonde people with blue eyes come from. And, um, and it's wonderful. We, we really encouraged our kids to, to learn Spanish. And I'm amazed at a, a couple of things. I'm amazed that there's still some people out there that seem concerned or uncomfortable with different languages and especially Spanish. Uh, I don't know. Is that something that you observe at all? Well, I think, you know, um, I've been a professional artist and illustrator for 20 years and 20 years ago, you know, I've been doing the same thing and it was a much different time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of, you know, emphasis on diversity or looking at that kind of type of art in commercial in the commercial field. Um, there was some, but I just felt like, but what I felt like, you know, the world is changing and, and things change and it takes time. It takes time for people to see different things and, and see the beauty and everything and the diversity, you know, to see that, that those wonderful aspects. Mm-hmm. So to me today, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's a different type of world and we're moving into something, you know, more more, you know, especially now that you have access to so many different things so quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I mean, we're so open to, to the food of Spanish. Uh, we're so open to, to the, the, the kind of the, the music of Spanish. It's, 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 that we're so open to so many aspects about it, the art of Spanish, uh, Latin, Latino culture that, um, it's funny that people would find it, you know, um, um, a little bit nervous, you know, to feel a little nervous about it because we we love it so much, in other words. And I think those are so interesting. And it's and I think finding those wonderful connections between all cultures mm-hmm. and all diversity and everybody is so important and fun and interesting. And 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 to just in, in incorporate that in my books is is just a privilege and an honor. Yeah, it's really it, it, it's been really fun for our family to to mix the the different cultures and and to you know pinatas have always been a part of our birthday <laughs> celebrations, and, and 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 now that my kids are adults, they're still part of the birthday celebrations. Except what's inside the pinatas has changed a little bit when they're adult parties, which was kind of blew my mind when I saw it, but it was, it's, it works. Uh, how did you get into illustrating? Where, where did that love come from? Well, you know, it's interesting. Growing up, I always loved to do art ever since I was a kid, before I even started school. In fact, there's a, I was even in the newspaper on the very first day of preschool, of, I was drawing portraits, and it's, it, it's just a funny photo. Like So since day one, I've always been doing art. What I didn't know, however, is how do you become an artist when you get older? How do you make this a profession? Because I didn't have anybody that was an artist that I knew in the family or friend. How do you do this? What is what is the what is the root to this? Is that even possible? You know, because the only depictions you see of artists are those are these eccentric people like movies or something, and they don't look too healthy to me sometimes. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know what? I'm a little bit more stable than that. I don't know if I could do it that way. Um, and then one day. Um, when I was actually in junior college, um, a professional illustrator came to my class and, um, he, I knew his work and, and then that's when everything clicked. I understood. I got it. I said, this is the path I have to take. Mm -hmm. And I took it and I made a decision to take that path. And that was, you know, more than 25 years ago that I started that path. I went to art school. And uh, at Art Center in Pasadena. And then once I graduated uh, from that, I started, um, I moved to New York and then um, started doing professional illustration work for many different companies. And little by little, just kind of making my name for myself. And then, um, and the children's book is kind of interesting because 
that sort of came about by accident. Um, I wasn't really seeking it out, but someone noticed, a small publisher noticed that I, my work is very colorful, very family oriented and uh, very beautiful. And, you know, of course it, it, it talks about diversity and Latino uh, families and culture. So they offered me a project and um, I had no idea what I was doing. So I was just like, yeah, sure. I'll do it. And it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. And it took me about halfway through the project before I, I got it. I'm like, okay, this is, this is how it's supposed to go. This is how it's supposed to work. But, um, up until then, and, um, but it's so rich and so rewarding. And, and it's just been an amazing experience and journey this, this, these past 20 years, you know. So, but, um, that's kind of where, uh, a little bit of the background comes from my illustration career. You know, you, you just mentioned something that's very important for any young artist out there, whether you're a visual artist or a performing artist, uh, to, to remember when, when someone comes to you and says, can you do this? The answer is always absolutely. And then you yeah. hope you can figure it out. Um, <laughs> but you never turn down those, those first jobs. How, how hard was it for you coming from, um, a, a, a family that didn't have artists and you weren't around artists. You didn't know anybody who is a professional artist. How, how difficult was it for you to kind of take that step in, in that direction? Did, did your family support it? Uh, did you get, the, oh, you'll well, never the, eat kind even, of. Oh, well, I, I was going to say, that, um, well, even though my family, we didn't have like, as a professional artist, mm -hmm. you know, in the family or friend or something like that, that I knew of, my family 100% supported my interest in art, mm -hmm. which was so important, especially growing up. So every birthday I would get markers and pens and, and paper, and they knew that I liked to do art. They knew it, and they, they didn't know what would happen later on. But I think I think teaching kids about art in general, I mean, it's just it just gives a, a child – um, it, it, it encourages their creative thinking, the thought process. I think it just enhances the, their ability to problem solve in a creative way. And I think it's such an underdeveloped thing in school. So to me, it was like, it was, but to me, it was just the first love. I just love doing it. And because I, I love doing it, they also encouraged me to do it, which was meaningful. The other thing that really happened was teachers also began to notice that I really love to do art mm -hmm. and their support was also very important to guide me those steps. You know, maybe they didn't even know where it would lead to, but they always said, keep doing this, keep going with this. You have a talent, uh, keep working at it. And, um, I did. I, I did. I followed those things. So also when I go and I travel now and I, and I visit schools and I visit and I do conferences, I always honor my parents and I honor and my family. And I honor those teachers that encouraged me to continue doing this, um, you know, because it, it's been a journey. And to find that that path is not always easy. And art is a huge field. I mean, there's so many things you can do in it. You can, you can be in, you can be a, you know, a fine art painter. You can be doing children's books. You can be doing video game designs. You can be doing comics and, and graphic novels and all sorts of really great, awesome, interesting things. And where do you fit in, into all of that? I mean, that's a whole other thing that happens on your journey of what do you like to do in art, you know, as well. So, um, again, I'm just so grateful that I've had a lot of mentors along the way and I try to get back today. You know, I try to speak to people today that are also coming up and, um, and, and try to help them find their path as well. Cause I think it's important to give back as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're mentioning all the different ways that a person can make a living as, a, as an artist. Um, my, my niece that we were talking about earlier, Jimena and I had a chance after we saw the, the next to last Avenger movie. We had an opportunity <laughs> to uh, speak to one of Great the, movies. yeah, yeah. We had a uh, chance to speak to one of the, one of the, uh, effects artists. Yeah. Um, that, that worked on that film and we were fascinated to find out that it can take three or four weeks to create like 10 or 15 seconds of the movie. <laughs> we're just yeah, blown it's, away. It's, it's a lot of work. I mean, um, and it's, that's not unusual. I mean, I, I remember I just read an article also about the, uh, uh, the Spider-Man multiverse, you know, the animated, uh, Spider-Man movie that came out last, uh, Christmas. I mean, it was like for a few seconds, it took them like weeks, mm -hmm. weeks to do just a few seconds of animation. And it's just, and they had hundred, like a hundred and, I don't know if it was 150 or, or more 
people working on, on that, uh, that project of animators only. It's just, it's an incredible process. So, but it's, but it's also worthwhile. I mean, it's so interesting at the same time because it's never the same. It's always different. You just like, Oh, you're going to work on this scene. Well, let's see how we can make this work. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we can develop that. And, and that's the same thing in children's books, you know, too. How can we, bring these words to life how can we 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 put this in on pages and make it art and make it interesting you know not not only for kids but also for adults because adults read to kids and i always felt like i wanted my books to be as interesting for adults as they are for kids um without missing a step you know without losing anything i just wanted to be that interesting and beautiful and creative and 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 so i i, I also tend to pick projects that are kind of like Things that I'm interested in because mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes me a long time to do each project. Mm -hmm. um, each children's book that I do takes six to eight months. Wow. So because I hand paint everything, mm -hmm. I'm still traditional in that. Uh, even though I do touch up um, in Photoshop and things like mm -hmm. that to clean up. But um, I just like doing the painting process. I like the drawing process and the painting process. I think it's an important um you know, it just, it's, it's almost therapeutic for me, mm -hmm. but it's also just, it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful time. Yeah. How, with, with, one of the things I've heard from, from artists and also children's authors is just that uh, the, the relationship between author and, and uh, illustrator, even though oftentimes they have no direct communication with each other, that the illustrator is just as important in telling the story as the author who puts the words together. Was that something that you understood from that very first project, or did it take you some time to kind of understand that uh, you were as big a part of the storytelling as the author? The, yes, the author. As the author. Um, well, I mean, it, it's, it's such a... Again, I, again, going back when I was young, I was always a visual learner. So to me, visuals were always things that stuck with me more than words. I actually had a harder time with language and words than probably, I mean, not too hard, but I'm just, but visually I always got things right away. And I always felt that that's, especially in a children's book, it's, it's, it's one of the first things a child will look at are the pictures because maybe their language skills haven't developed to that that sophisticated level, but they know what it, what they see in the picture right away. It's a very easy to communicate that information. So it, it is a big part of the children's book, and visually, um, you know, it it, it 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 really could define a book. I mean, it, you think if like there, it's funny because like there have been some projects where um, that I, I I was offered but didn't do, and then I found out later I saw. Another artist do it, and the visually how different it was. That was really interesting, actually, um, to see how they addressed it. You know, because a, a visually how an artist addresses a, a children's book could be so different from artist to artist, um, and kind of really set the tone. You know, so mm -hmm. but I mean the words. Once the words are there, also it could be so inspiring at the same time. Mm -hmm. You read a story, you read the words, the way something is written, and the way it just flows. You know, when you read it, and when you read it out loud to a child, and then when you kind of complement those the pictures. That's what I really want to do is just find the best way to complement the words. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with my pictures and my art. Um, to tell the best story that I can tell together, you know, cause I'm again, this is kind of, we're at the tail end of the project, you know, mm -hmm. the story has been written, the, the, the publisher is getting ready, you know, to, 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 to get it ready once I do the art. So I'm kind of like at that tail end where everything comes, kind of comes together and now you see it just, wow, it's really amazing and it's really kind of a special moment to me. And, um, and yeah, it's interesting that you don't talk to the author usually during the, this process, um, it's usually a, an editor or an art director at the publisher. Um, although there is a little bit of a time where uh, the author will hopefully see the sketches and mm -hmm. approve and make sure everything looks correct. Because sometimes I do work on a lot of nonfiction books, mm -hmm. and you know, if they catch anything, you <laughs> you want to make sure you're doing it right and everything's researched and accurate. And, um, sometimes they'll they'll say, well, it was like this, but not like this. Uh, but but most often it's it's a very positive experience and then um and then you know it, and and then and often once the book is published it's it's not until then that i get to sometimes meet the author mm -hmm. 
and um, which is fun. It's like this reunion that, that you, of this person that you you meet for the first time, but like you felt like you've known them for so many so long already. It's, mm-hmm. it's a very kind of a really kind of a fun surreal sort of moment. <laughs> Now, have you ever had this? this I, I hope this doesn't sound like a silly question, but knowing me, it probably is. Have you ever had a situation where you're reading a story for the first time, you're getting the images, and you're thinking, and you're loving it, and the story, and then all of a sudden, the story kind of takes a twist, and you go, "No, you shouldn't have gone in that direction. You should have come in this other way. I could make such beautiful art for this other direction." Um, that's interesting. I don't know <laughs> if I've had, you know, because usually when I read the story, I'll read it. And then read it and reread it and reread it and reread it until it, I just, um, I really, um, I'm trying to think of going over all the books though that I've done. Have there any been any like twists that were, I don't think so. I think everything, any twist that there was that they, that the author came up with was always something that I've all, it always seemed to come across very naturally mm-hmm. and very wonderful, even if it was unexpected. Just like, yeah, that's great. I love how she did this or I love how he did this. You know, like, you know, like, oh, he's going to talk about this. OK. All right. This is going to be a challenge um, in a sense. There was a book I actually did about um, a gentleman from New Orleans and it had to do with Hurricane Katrina. And uh, that was a book that uh y- you know, because you're dealing with something that was real, that was, an, you know, and uh, it, it almost felt like there was two parts to that story because it was about the gentleman and how he was a very charismatic person and everybody knew him. And he was a real life person. He was a sanitation worker in, in New Orleans and everybody knew who he was and said hello to him. And he was this really great guy. And then um, and then the storm comes and then the book shifts into this whole other sort of tone for a bit. And it. It was a challenge because it's like how to balance that out without um, without making it too um, I don't want to say sanitized, but just sort of too skipping over, glossing over, mm-hmm. because it was a very serious thing, and you want to address those serious things, but you have to do it in an appropriate way. Mm-hmm. So yeah. serious. So that was a very interesting thing, but I liked that that it was a challenge. I loved that it was. It was, it gave it that weight and importance, but also came, and then in the end, you know, it comes back again. You know, what is important? What is, what is it, what is it about community and about family and about pulling together and about overcoming things? I think that's such, it had such a great message at the end. It was just, and it, um, that book was called Marvelous Cornelius, um, uh, Hurricane Kitchen and the Spirit of New Orleans. Um, and that was, that was another, I mean, that's what I mean. It's like all these different books and projects you work on. They're each is so unique and interesting. And, and um, you kind of just I, I get in and, and just fall in love with the, these stories mm-hmm. and I get to work on them. And um, it, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. Well, that love and passion, you can absolutely feel that in your voice as, as you're talking about this. And I am I'm, I'm looking at some, some of your artwork from Marvelous Cornelius and and. and it reminds me of how much fun I had with my kids because you would read the books, uh, you know, th- there were certain books that they wanted to read over and over and over again. And um, one of the things uh, about your artwork is is I think that we could sit and just look at this, the, the picture that I'm looking at not right now with uh, Cornelius kneeling down and he has a trash bin next to him and then the city of New Orleans is behind them. And there's so much going on in the illustration. I mean, I think we could spend uh, 20, 25 minutes just pointing out the different things that are going on in the picture. And, and this, this picture is, is telling a story just with one picture. It's telling the story of this city. And there's so much going on. And, and it's, it's beautiful and, and fun. And um, I, that was one of the things that was so much fun for me as a dad reading with my kids so many years ago. Well, I, I think I'm, I'm so influenced also by folk art mm-hmm. and, and, you know, folk art from all over, American folk art, uh, uh, Mexican folk art, uh, from all over the world, in fact, um, because I feel it has that natural storytelling in it mm-hmm. itself. And I think it just it matches so well with children's books because it's about children's books are about storytelling. Mm-hmm. And and then again, I love to tell stories within stories, you know, even behind the scenes stuff that's going on. 
So there's like multiple levels to it. And, um, I think it's, it's an amazing and fun and fun. And especially when you get to read it out loud and, and introduce it to the kids and they enjoy it. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's just magic. It's a magical experience and, 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 and wonderful to be a part. One of the things we've talked a lot about here on the podcast is the importance of representation, uh, importance to, of for kids to see themselves represented in in books, whether the boys or girls or Latinos or African Americans or uh, Asian, or, you know, just to be able to see characters. Sure. Uh, what what's your experience been when if if have you ever had a chance to walk into a group and and there's some Latino kids in the in the classroom, they look up and they go, whoa, you're like me and you're doing the artwork and you're an illustrator and that's so cool. I've never met a Latino artist before. I think it is cool. I think it is amazing. You know, I've, I've been to uh, some schools around the country and, again, I love talking to all kids and, and I think everybody can just enjoy all everything that this world offers in mm-hmm. diversity. Um, and, yeah, you know, some of, some of the schools I go to – very large Hispanic populations, and I see it on their faces. Again, it's like you do picture books, and you do picture books that have me in them, mm-hmm. and um, and then they start getting ideas. Like I really just want people to get ideas. I want kids to feel like they have a voice. They have because you know when I was young, I was I was very introverted, and uh, so talking to people was was a hard thing for me. You know, I had to brothers and they were very extroverted and that was fine i totally <laughs> love the difference between us uh but it's just funny but in my art i found my voice at a very young age and people would come over to me all the time and say wow john you're doing this really cool thing with art you're doing this and you're doing that and you know maybe i wasn't even the best artist and it's funny because you know i always tell people you know i wasn't the best artist in school necessarily especially when i got to art school but i was always working on that and people knew me as that and i think if kids can find a way uh, their voice in this world uh, through art through music through dance through theater through writing through any creative field that they can think about um then i think you know they're going to have their journey in life and their creative journey is going to impact others in a positive and wonderful way and i think it just kind of just it multiplies, multiplies. And I just feel that. Um, and also for themselves. I mean, you know, art, in, I always, I also tell people, you know, having art in school or, or music in school or drama and writing in school, creative writing, it's not necessarily to create also more artists or more, more actors. I think it's just to teach kids also to think creatively. And if you see books or you see music that you can relate to or hear music that you can relate to and see that, um, those possibilities and make it a part of your life, um, you will feel better. You will think better. You will problem solve better. Mm-hmm. And I just, I feel like it's this really positive, wonderful, um, aspect that, um, it is, is, it can be, uh, a beautiful thing mm-hmm. in a person's life. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. My, my <laughs> daughter that I've mentioned, I've mentioned many times on the podcast is in the music business. But one of the ways that she developed her voice and her ability to communicate and to express herself was through dance and song. And, you know, having the confidence to be able to get up there on the stage and dance and sing and express herself in that way has given her the confidence to go into the business world and express yeah. herself, you know, in the conference room. I agree. I think, I think it, it, it affects so many other parts of your life in such a positive way as well. Like, you know, like you say, your daughter uh, does, you know, expresses herself through dance and then she applies that her confidence, she and expressions into business and into other things. And it's just, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously you're, you're, you're just killing it with the, with the children's illustrations and they really are there. I just, I love that. I wish your books were around when my kids were little. Um, (laughs) But is there, is there anywhere, any kind of art that, that is not related to children's books that you're exploring right now or that you want to get into? Um, well, no, I mean, I've always been a commercial illustrator. Mm-hmm. So I've done work for many different companies, record companies, uh, magazines, editorial things. Um, the project that I really was really excited to get to work on uh, just a couple years ago was I uh, – 
six uh, forever stamps for the post office. Ooh. So uh, I did uh, si- uh, did the, a series called the Delicioso, which had to do with uh, Latino food, and um, it was it was incredible. It was just a wonderful project to get to work on. Uh, I was so honored to be selected for it, and um, um, and it's an amazing amazing thing and. And that also was um, something was very important, you know. And I also love food, so it was it was kind of this natural combination of like, you know, enjoying Latino food because my aunts used to cook all the time, like tamales, you know, growing up and and pisole and stuff like that. So um, when I got to do this, it was kind of like I was getting to honor them as well, and it, it was such a wonderful. Uh, um, uh, a part and and stamps. I mean, forever stamps. You know, I know. that I could use forever. It's just incredible. I, so I get to, I, you know, I bought a whole bunch of them, of course, and my mom bought a whole bunch of them and, uh, um, you know, and, um, you know, I get to use them and, and send them out. And it's, um, so things like that. So I love working on other types of illustration projects as well. So it's, it's great. And, and that's, that's really exciting. I mean, just think of you, the artwork that you've created, is, they're, they're tiny, but they're going on pieces of mail, millions of pieces of mail, and they're going, yeah. All over the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I know folks are going to want to connect more with you, find out more. But, oh, oh, before you before I ask you for your website. Sure. You, you talked about creating each illustration by hand, by painting it. So in the beginning, there is an, there's an illustration on canvas or paper or whatever. What happens to those beautiful pieces of art after they're cre- put into the books? Um, well, uh, often they get sold um, to collectors or they could be auctioned off. Uh, I know I'm part of um, – there's going to be a piece that uh, for the Eric Carl Museum that's coming up. Um, I think they'll be auctioned off this year, um, later this year at their annual uh, fundraiser. And so things like that happen, which is kind of exciting. Um, or they're just here in my home hanging up in my house. Um, there's lots of paintings behind me. Mm-hmm. And, Actually, yeah. Um, so I love, I love seeing the, uh, the original work and I do shows and I've had shows. I think the biggest show that I had was down in Virginia and Longview, Longwood, um, uh, um, gallery. I think it was over 130 paintings, uh, original works. And, um, uh, and that was an amazing experience and it was really, uh, uh, an honor to be a part of that as well. So I've done a, a number of shows over the years as well. So, and all the way from shows in Brazil, uh, Mexico, um, and throughout the United States. Very, very cool. I just said, what a, what a cool exhibit it would be just bringing in a number of different artists, illustrators of children's books and just displaying, uh, that, that artwork in a gallery. That would be a really cool event. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of also places uh, throughout the country that have original children's book art as well that you can go visit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Maza Museum uh, in Ohio, I believe. There's the Nickel in, in Abilene, Texas. Um, and I think, well, Eric Carl Museum in uh, Massachusetts I, has a, a number of, I, I believe, uh, original uh, children's book art as well. We'll have to check that out. That's, that's close to home. Yeah. Well, where, where can folks go online to check out more about John Pada? Uh, you can go to johnpotterart.com and um, find uh, all my information, biographies, artwork, um, and different things that I'm up to, as well as events. I'm also going to be at the Gaithers Book, Book Festival this weekend in uh, Maryland, um, so depending on when this uh, podcast comes out, um, but I'll be there this Maryland. But I'm always uh, heading off to some event or take things, and I love talking to people, and I love hearing their stories as well, so say hello. Awesome. We've been talking today to the illustrator of so many books, but his latest is called One is a Pinata, a Book of Numbers, John Pada. John, thank you so much for being part of the show. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest is the author of Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck, Allison Paul Klackowitz. You are going to fall in love with Allison and her story. Hey, I am so very excited. This is this has been such a wonderful show. We would love to have you on the Reading With Your Kids podcast if you are a children's author. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Let my producer, Fatima, know all about your great book. 
she will let you know the next easy steps. And being a guest on the show really is easy. It really is fun. And it gives you the opportunity to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. You know how hard it is to, to let people know about your book and to get, get people interested in your book and just to get your book seen. The Reading With Your Kids podcast, we are so proud that we are giving voice to so many authors, especially independent authors. So please, if you are interested in being on the show, check us out, readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my amazing guest today, John Fada. I am looking forward to him being back on the show in the near future. I also want to thank our sponsors, Dr. Connie Tate. Make sure you check out her website, rollonreading.com. There's all sorts of great activities you can download for free, and you can also find out about her great books. We also want to thank Allison Paul Klackowitz. She'll be here next week. We're so excited. I absolutely want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all that she does for the show. Make sure you check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. And I need to thank my beautiful wife. She gives me so much support. She has to, like, listen to me do all this post-production. It drives her a little bit crazy, I think. But she is such a supporter of children's reading, and, and, and she's a supporter of me, too. And I love her. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And most of all, thank you so much for showing support and love to your kids and helping make the world a better place. And you do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking through the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>